greatest lesson of your life will be to learn to enter in to the timings of the Lord. That's going to be one of the greatest lessons of your spiritual journey here in the earth. This is going to be one of the greatest lessons that you will ever learn is to be in God's timing. That is the greatest, one of the greatest lessons of living by the Spirit of the Lord is that you and I learn how to remain in spirit time. That's, that's the lesson. That's the lesson. Because in spirit time, that is where the perfect will of God is always birthed and always executed. Somebody needs to hear what I'm saying. When we come into the fullness of time, when you and Holy Spirit are in total agreement as to the timings and the seasons of the Lord, you will not have struggle. You will not have stress. You will have peace that passes all understanding. Because in the presence of the prophetic purposes of God, the prophetic timings of God, must come together and kiss. His, his timings, his spiritual timings, his eternal timings and seasons are already set for our lives. This is why we need Holy Spirit. We need Holy Spirit while we are earthbound. <clears throat> we will not need Holy Spirit. We will be in the presence of Holy Spirit when we leave the body, when we leave the earth. But as long as you and I are earth bound, we need Holy Spirit to keep us into the place, the time, the season. The accuracy of Holy Spirit is unbeatable. Eh, nah, nah. Somebody write that. The accuracy of Holy Spirit is unbeatable. You cannot beat him when it comes to his accuracy, his, his absolute precision. And those of us that are earthbound, we need that kind of advantage. We need, we need that kind of advantage because we operate in chronos time. We operate in the temporal. We operate in the what we can see, the sensual. We operate, we, our time frames are measured by watches and And we can put something on our minds and we can put it down as if it must happen. And the awakening of Holy Spirit is that he's not obligated to crown us. He's obligated to us, but he's never obligated to make what we want happen. That what he is doing, Holy Spirit is doing in our lives is that he is bringing us and ushering us and perfecting us and guiding us and navigating us into the perfect. That perfect acceptable will of Almighty God, the timings of God, the supernatural minding of God how he moves, how he operates is not given to us through study, but by revelation of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is our advantage 
Holy Spirit is our advantage. What he brings us cannot be searched on Google. What he drops in our spirit, what he says to us, what he whispers to us to give us advantage. The other night, Holy Spirit spoke to me about something and I was rustling and wrestling through the night because he was dealing with me. I didn't know what it was about. I really didn't because they know don't bother me. I don't get bothered with dreams very seldom. They, they just bother me. And when I say they, I'm talking about the God in. They just bother me. <laughs> and then when I am waking up, my first words are, good morning, Holy Spirit. And just a little something he dropped. It was just like two or three words. But it can change the trajectory of something very important. And his timings are perfect. His timings are so accurate. And what I want you to understand is that not only do you know, do you not know always the what, you definitely don't know the when. You don't know the W-H-E-N. You most times don't know the H-O-W. It's the timing of God. It's the timing of the Lord. I don't know. How many of you, and this is what I'm seeing. How many of you have ever been at the airport or you've been in a big building and it has those walking uh, things? I don't know what you call them. You know, escalators, elevators, but walking, moving walkers, walkways. You, you know what I'm saying? Those, you get on them and you can stand still and it moves you or you can get on and you can walk. But it's moving. It's moving. And I just see that now that that there'll be people that'll be on the side walking. And sometimes I will walk when I want, and I need to get steps in. <clears throat> but most times... I just jump on that thing and just say, carry me. Praise the Lord. And I want you to envision that as your relationship with Holy Spirit. I want you to envision it. I want you to get in Holy Spirit and let him carry you. Let him carry you into your next gate. I hear this Holy Spirit, yes. As we are walking in the airport and we get on that, what are we doing? We're going to our what? Gate. We're going to our what? Destination. Glory to God. We're going sometimes to baggage claim. We're going some sometime to a gate or we're going to a vendor, but it's taking us somewhere. I just saw that. Holy Spirit is our advantage. Oh my God. I want you and I to, to get in Holy Spirit at that level of intimacy and trust. We are doing way too much on the outside of the timings of God. So I'm on these, you know, moving walkways and people are walking, you know, they got the dogs, they're doing what, oh, they're in a, a, they have a stroller or they have some other apparatus that they are not as comfortable or they're just doing it right. But me, I'm on the walkway and sometimes I don't move anything. I just put my bag on it and I just observe what's going on because I know that this walkway is already predestined to get me where I need to go. It's already predestined. I don't have to program it. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to ask someone about it. And it perturbs me. <laughs> when sometimes I get there and they're working on it, like, oh man, I gotta walk. I gotta get the steps in. But what I what what I just saw is this is going, he is our advantage. You'll get there smoother, you'll get there faster, whether you walk or whether you just take the ride, folks. Because this walkway, this walk in the spirit is that we are on is timed. And and we we mess up. We 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 sometimes are not good stewards of our time. Help us to number our days. It's a timed walk. It, we are earthbound for only a short period of time. And why would you want to spend that short amount of time, whether, whether it is a 30-year walk or a 90-year walk or an 80-year walk, why would you want to spend any of that time frustrated 
and not in the will, not in the timing, not in the seasons of the Lord. I've had so many opportunities to share with people and they'll come to me and they'll say, Bishop, the Lord told me to open a church or the Lord told me to open a business or the, or the Lord told me to do this and I'll say it's timed. Let's talk about what he said. And they're just bubbling up and they're just so excited. And then I'll say, and when did he tell you to do it? Well, I just feel like the Lord wants me to do it now. I said, I didn't ask you that. I said, when did he tell you to do it? Oh, somebody's not going to like me. When did he tell you to do it? Well, I, 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 I just, you know, I, I've already just done some things and I, I've talked to a musician or I've talked to some business leaders and I've done this and I said, and amen, God bless you. But you didn't answer my question. You've told me the how. You've told me the what even. But you haven't told me the when. You know why you can't tell me? Because he hasn't spoken it yet. Listen to me carefully. In prophecy, real prophecy now, the prophetic of God, when a prophet of God, a governmental prophet is speaking, except the Lord, unless he's a, he or she is a master prophet and they're in a different realm of authority and a spans. Their garment is larger. They most likely will not tell you timing. And if they do, it's usually at the tail end of the prophecy. They'll say in about three years. Now, I'm not saying that they're not those that give dates. I, I, I've known people that give dates. But that is very rare because the prophetic realming of God, that realm is so precise that God will not allow us to guess. Now we can sense something. We can have a, 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 a pull. We can have kind of like a, a, a sway. But unless the Lord says it specifically on this day, on Thursday, this day on Friday of 2022, in the third month of whatever that date is, that's a, that's a master prophet. But in 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 the majority of the prophets prophecies that you and I will receive, and even those that God speaks to us supernaturally by the word or by prayer, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, will not have a date stamp on. And, and, and learning to get in this space. And, and they'll say, well, I'm going to, you know, I found a building. I've done this. I've done it. And I said, well, okay. I said, but the timing is off. The season is off. How much money do you have in the bank to start a church? Well, I don't have any, but I know the Lord is going to provide. I said, okay. How are you going to support the church until people come? He's going to send the people. Okay. All right. All right. Good luck with that. Well, I'm going to open my business. I found a building and I've got the supplies. I, you know, I put it on my bank card. I did that. And that's good. But is the when, I get the what, but is this the when, W-H-E-N, -E that he gave you? I know that man is my husband. I know that woman is my wife. I know this. I know that. I know that. I know that. And the truth of the matter is you don't know. And the best thing that you and I can do is get on that wall. And allow it to usher us into Kairos time. When it ushers us into it, oh God, hear this, hear this. When, when he ushers us into that timing, you get off, you be like, wow, your gate is right there. And, and there's no struggle. You wasn't sweating. You wasn't running. You wasn't trying to, to get, get there before time. You... You get there, you're, you're breathing well, you're not sweaty, you're, you're just, you're, you're on time and you're in time. And this is one of the greatest lessons that human beings who are trying to live spirit lives must be able to comprehend, to learn, and to master. You've got to master this. There is nothing more frustrating than hearing something from the Lord accurately and then you 
striking out on your own to try to make it happen. It's nothing more frustrating. There is nothing more frustrating. <laughs> we won't allow Holy Spirit, yes ma'am, to lead us in timing. And, and one of the things that I believe COVID, the pandemic, is trying to break off of us is this habit of impatience. It is a habit that will cause you a shipwreck every time. It is a habit. Somebody says it's a spirit. I, I can't validate that. I'm sure that it comes out of the spirit of fear. I'm sure that impatience is a byproduct of the spirit of fear. I'm sure that the spirit of fear working with rejection, previous traumas, you know, ain't nobody going to make me miss nothing. I, I don't know. I'm going to do this instead of this. But that's not what Holy Spirit gave you. You have a word from the Lord. You don't need to be courting anything else. You don't need to be dating something else. I'm talking to somebody this morning. This is how you come upon a shipwreck. Not because God didn't speak it, but because you did not wait for it. And you began to date out of your frustration something else. You began to court something else because you could not wait on the word of the Lord. But if you were on that walkway, if you were operating in the spirit, if you were avoiding your own emotional uh, drives and your own fears, if you, were, if you were walking on the walkway, you wouldn't even be in that space. Get out of that space. Let me tell you something about the second voice. The first voice is always God. I, I remember Pastor Gilbert Vaughn used to say, you better follow your first mind. I would be in a space preaching and I would, you know, be doing something and, and, and the, and the spirit of God would have something absolutely spirit, absolutely God, absolutely precise, absolutely accurate. And then I start second guessing myself. Now I, I have a, I have a ticket on my departure date. I have a, everything is set and I want to start changing things. You know, this, I've been doing this a long time. This was before change fees. Change fees that help you stay in the will of God, especially one hundred fifty dollar, two hundred dollar change fees. We got to change those tickets. <laughs> All right. And he used to say to me, "Follow your first." That first voice is ninety nine percent of the time God. The first time you heard the voice, the first time the word of the Lord came to you. That first prophetic word, that first, that is normally God. Something bubbles up in your spirit. Something, something, something the Holy Spirit is saying to you. That's, that's going to be your first mind. Your first, that first voice. Where we get in trouble is the second voice. The second voice is what gets us in trouble. We have something that. And we have done our due diligence, but because we wrapped it in a time frame and a timeline, we are now frustrated by our own timeline. So now we begin to court something else. We began to date something else and we justify it. We make sense of it. That's the biggest. Listen, God spoke to Abraham. He said, I'm going to give you a child. I'm going to give you a child. And he said, okay. And he spoke to Sarah and said, I'm going to give you guys a child. And he said, they said, all right. After she laughed and got herself together <laughs> because she knew that her boy, you know, she knew his age. She knew, she knew. She, so she laughed. But after they settled themselves and they got in agreement with that thing, that was the first voice. And then a second voice came. And the second voice 
is creating havoc right now in the world. Because the second voice that they began to entertain was the Ishmael voice. Why would they begin to entertain the Ishmael voice or the voice of another direction or voice of the, another instruction because of this whole thing of impatience. Impatience. Listen to me. That second voice is simply an indication of your own frustration and your own way of wanting things to work out. Holy Spirit is this not double tongued. He's not double minded. Holy Spirit is not double minded. Our God is not double minded. He he doesn't rethink himself. His his words, he is immutable. He doesn't he doesn't turn. There's no he doesn't turn and there's no shadow of turning in him. That's his immutability. Our challenge is is Ina Namashea. <laughs> hey, our challenge is that we get to the place now where we we start entertaining a second voice. I don't know about you, but I've done that. And it wrecked havoc. It wrecked havoc. And that second voice that Sarah and Abraham began to engage is wrecking havoc in the Middle East, wrecking havoc in the earth, wrecking havoc right now. We got to be mindful. We got to be mindful. Stick with that first voice. What did that first voice say to you? What did it say? Don't add anything to it. Prophecy is not to be added to. You don't need to add anything to it. Stick with that first voice. What did it say? Watch this. Not only what did it say, but be careful of what it did not say. Don't you color it in with your crayons. Stick with what he said. Most times it is simply a skeletal. It is not the full picture. Why? Holy Spirit will begin to paint it in. Holy Spirit will begin to draw it in more. You just get on the walkway. This is not up to you to make happen. You will receive instructions along the way. You will get it on a need to know basis. You're not going to be super cool in this. You're, you're going to feel funny. You're going to feel like it's over. You're going to feel devastated. You're going to get frustrated. That's why you have to learn how to wait and, and, and not just wait, but learn how to wait on the Lord. Master, teach us how to wait. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Isn't it amazing how we know these scriptures, we know these songs, but when it's our time to wait, we don't quote these scriptures. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. Come on, Isaiah 40. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Even the young men grow weary. Yes, yes. But master, teach me how to wait. And I know my waiting is not in vain. <laughs> Ooh, glory, glory, teach me how to wait. Lord God, Lord God, I feel your presence. Teach me how to wait. Listen to me very carefully. I know many of us think that this next year is going to be a better year. It's not. I know, I know that people are going to start telling you it is. But this is going to be a year of warfare. It's going to be more intensified. The spiritual realms are troubled. The spirit. It's going to be great turnovers. It's going to be, there's going to be great, great turnovers. It's, it's, it's going to happen at the, at, at every level it's, and it's still not going to be what we would consider our pre pandemic normal. I know you're saying I'm so sick of 2020 and I can't wait for 21. I'm just going to say this to you. It's not going to. That, that's gonna buy that's gonna that's gonna bother you but get on this walkway let's walk it out 
Let don't get off. Let's walk it through. Because oh, you're going to get to your destination. It's going to be a season where we're going to have to dive even deeper. With, there's some things that are going to be settled. There's some things that are going to be resolved. But this season is teaching us to get our patience back. In patience, you possess your soul. The Bible said the trying of your faith is going to work patience. And the testing of your faith is what produces patience. You cannot pray for patience. You have to, you have to work through your frustrations and your wearinesses and your, imp and your impatience to arrive at a place of patience and peace and rest. I hear you, Lord. There yet remaineth a rest for the people of God. There is a rest for the people of God. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. There is a rest for the people of God. So pray ye that you enter into the rest. Not that everything is settled. Not that everything is resolved. Not that the pandemic is over. Not that the political stuff is finished. But pray that you enter into the rest. Enter into the rest. Get to the point where it don't even matter. It don't even matter. Get to the place where you say, listen, I'm on this walkway with the Holy Spirit. And when I get there, I'll get there. You got to be able to get that in your spirit. You got to be able to get that. And, and, and what we want to hear is that this is over. I wish I could tell you, but it's not. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be a two or three year. I don't have a date, but I know through 22. I know that it, it, it's too much. It's too much rebellion. It's too much disobedience. It's too much defiance for this to be over. It's not. But you and I can be in the rest of God. This is the timings of the Lord. This is the time to buckle down and, and, and to be in a place where you are in a place of peace and rest. Because you're in the timing of the Lord. Hebrews, let's go there for just a minute. And I want to go back to Hebrews 6. 6 of Hebrews. I, I just, oh God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6. Hebrews chapter number 6. Oh, teach. Faith on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. Oh, yes. They shall run and not be weary. Something like that. Teach us, Lord, teach us, Lord, how to wait. Oh, God, Master, teach us how to wait. See, we used to sing the vamp. Master, teach us how to wait. Master, teach me how to wait. <laughs> ah! Woo! See, them old songs get you through, baby. <laughs> They that wait upon the Lord. Listen to this. Six of Hebrews. Six of Hebrews. Verse 10. For God is not unjust. You got your paper Bible? To forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name. And that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Mark verse 11 of Hebrews uh, chapter number 6. That you would show the same diligence, the full assurance of hope until the end. That you do not become sluggish. Verse 12. 
but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely, blessings, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Wow. For men indeed swear by the greater. An oath for confirmation is for them an end of dispute. Thus, God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible, number one, for God to lie and that we would have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope set before us. And this hope we have as an anchor of the soul. That's the mind the emotions, and the will, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Wow. Ooh-wee. Yes, yes. That God's promises, his prophecies are immutable. But we have to wait. How do I obtain my prophecy? How is it? Can I defer it? Can I delay it? Can I, can I, can I destroy it? No, no. Even with Hagar and Ishmael, it didn't move God one bit. It didn't move his word. It didn't move his promise. It didn't do anything. It was for an appointed time. So whatever you did in the middle of that, whatever you and Sarah and Hagar worked out, y'all going to work it out. But I'm not over there. I'm not, I'm not over there working with you. I'm over here in my own time, in my own, in the spirit. God is never, he's never moved by your mistake. Your behavior doesn't change his mind. It doesn't kill the prophetic word over your life. And so it may cause some consequences. But God's word is immutable. What God spoke, if God spoke it, it ain't falling to the ground. Our challenge is timing. Our challenge is timing. 2021, timings. The timings of the Lord. Oh my God, I wish I had me a musician in E-flat. Come on, Wanda, where, Andy, where y'all at? Come on, give me that E-flat. Teach us how to wait. We obtain the promises through faith. That's how we receive the promises. That's how we lay hope on the prophetic word of the Lord in our lives. Through faith and patience. And we think it's just faith. No, it's patience. Now, you don't even have to pray about this. You don't have to pray about the word of the Lord. You don't have to pray. You walk off and just put it on the shelf. You don't have to do nothing. That shelf, these shelves, these books behind me, all you got to do is put it on the shelf. Walk away. You, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to, to get somebody to agree with you about it. You don't have to go someplace and have somebody to lay hands on. All you got to do is wait. Is wait. And not court another voice. Not begin to date something else. Because the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eye will run you crazy in this prophetic season. This is why you and I need the Holy Spirit while we are earthbound. You and I need Holy Spirit. It ain't an option. It's, it's not something you need to be thinking about. You need the Holy Ghost. 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 I am praying that not one person that is watching this broadcast 
is not filled with the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. If you live in the earth, you need the Holy Ghost. You cannot play. You cannot guess. You cannot act and be dismissive about the reality of God's power, God's person being with you in your earth journey. Because you and I will get out of his timings. You will do it. I have done it. I have done it. We, you will do it. And you'll do it continually until you master this. You've got to master being in the timing of the Lord. You have to master this. You have to master your frustration. You have to master your impatience. You cannot obtain the prize if you strive unlawfully. The only ones that win must strive lawfully. You must master. You got to master your 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 impatience. You got to master your fear. You got to master you know that, oh, I just, oh, it's just to take too long. I don't understand why it's taking so long. You don't need to understand that. What you need to do is get on this walkway and love the scenery. <laughs> That's all you need to do. Your greatest decision is to get on the walkway and walk with the Holy Spirit. That's all you need to do. And as he whispers instructions, as he tells you what to do, He'll say, do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now. And you'll say, right now, right now. It doesn't look like you should. It doesn't look like it's appropriate. Sometimes it may feel funny. You may look funny. But if you're on this walkway with him, he knows the exact time. He knows the precise moment. Glory to God. You need Holy Spirit on the earth. You don't need him in heaven. You need him on the earth to help you with the timing. You must not only wait, but you must wait well. You must wait well. You cannot wait frustrated. You cannot wait angry. You cannot wait bitter. With faith and patience, you will possess the promises of God. But you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Before you sign a contract for the building, you need the Holy Ghost. Is this the right timing? Will I need a building for the next two years? Will we ever come back in that building in the processes of our koinonia as we once knew? Before you sign on the dotted line for business venture, before you sign on a dotted line in Anasia, who to be married before on the dotted line to, to take a new job, a contract, you need the Holy Ghost. God, I believe this is what you want, but is this the timing of it? You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost in your relationships. Is this a time to be married? Is this a time to be single? Is this a time to be dating? That and just about shut down. My God, is this the time? God, in the name of Jesus, send Holy Spirit with Kronos to get, not Kronos, but Kairos. And get this chronos out of my way. Them nonsense will get you changed, changed, troubled up. But it's the chronos that get us in trouble. We need the chaos. The, the chaos time. Holy Spirit, come with that. Come with that in my mind. Help me to reform it. I'm thinking to know your timings. Is it time for me to do this? Is it time for me to move? Is it time for me to, to, to be moving around? What time is it, Lord? What is the season? And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us to wait and wait well. To help us with the how do we wait. It was 20 plus years before Abraham received the promise. My God, 99. He, it was 20 plus years, 25 years. 
before God moved upon Sarah's womb and opened it. An old woman. And that's what happens. We start looking at the circumstances. We heard that first voice. But then we start looking at the circumstances. I'm old. Abram is old. My guy is old. My God, I'm old. I think it's a good idea that you were going with Hagar. Well, he wasn't that old. <laughs> that he wasn't that old because when he got in with that fine Ethiopian girl guess what <laughs> she conceived of his seed that was not in vitro she conceived but Sarah knew her womb was dead my god how are you gonna make this happen how long is it gonna take you before my womb is alive I'm old he's old he not, not, not say. It's taking all year for me to get a call back from a job. It's taking me all year. God, I applied. I need that job. I need this money. I need this stimulus. God, how long? How long? How long? You're frustrating yourself. You're frustrating yourself. You're complaining in prayer. You're frustrating. You're frustrating. You're frustrating yourself. You need the Holy Spirit. To say to you, get up, come on, let's go get a hamburger. Let's go get some pizza. Let's, let, go, come on, let's, 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 let's get up off of that. You're going to have to get on this walkway with me. You're going to trust me. I'm your spirit guide. I'm your earth agent. You're going to have to trust me. You're going to, how's my church going to look with it? Who cares? Stop caring so much about stuff and trust Holy Spirit. He's not sleep. He's not on vacation. He's working it out for our good. Go to, I want you to see something. Oh my gosh. Go to Ephesians. Hallelujah. Yes, Holy Spirit. Thank you for bringing that back to my mind. Go with me to Ephesians chapter number six. Oh, Rabbi Bashanda, Namakisa, Ita. You, 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 you're messing things up not because you, 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 you don't know the what. You're messing it up because the prophecy is for an appointed time. But look at this. Ephesians chapter number 6. And we, and we know this. But just, just hang on for this. So verse 11, of course. Uh, okay, verse 10, 6 and 10. Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Right? We got that. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. That you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let me tell you something. Waiting is when the devil intensifies his warfare against your mind. When you are waiting, when I was pregnant, oh my God, I'm telling you. It's, 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 it's a difficult, it's a difficult walk. But it is in the waiting. It got that by. <laughs> it was in the waiting that the enemy is fighting your mind, but Holy Spirit, God is developing it and maturing what was in me. But good Lord, nine months, it's a long time to wait. And while you're waiting on the Lord, that's when the, the enemy intensifies the wiles, the beguiling of the devil. That, that's when it begins to really intensify against you mentally and emotionally. Listen, you can get tired of waiting on the Lord. I tell, I tell God all the time, I said, I love everything about you, but your timing, sir, <laughs> your timing. Watch this, watch this. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are rankings, but I don't want to teach that now. Therefore, take up the whole armor, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. What is the evil day? The evil day is when you and I are about to get out of the fullness of time. That's an evil day. When you're about to do something that is not the timing to do it. Oh my God. Watch this. And having done all to stand. Verse 13. Let's go to 14 now. Stand therefore. Having girded your waist with truth, you know what the Lord said. You know what the prophet said. You know what the word of the Lord said. You know what your spirit man is saying. Having the breastplate of righteousness, 
That's an issue of integrity. Don't, don't, don't verb and swerve in your integrity. Keep your breastplate of righteousness and rightness on. Watch this. And having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But above all, watch this. Taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the devil. So the enemy and timing and time and waiting on the season, waiting on the time, waiting on all of those things is when the enemy is going to really come at you with the fiery darts of the wicked one. Put on the helmet of salvation. Get your mind together. But watch this. The sword of the Holy Spirit, which is the word of God, the sword of the Spirit. So the Spirit and the Word agree as one. Are you listening to me? And the sword, the weapon, the weapon you have, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God is what you have to speak over yourself while you are waiting on your prophetic destiny, while you're just on the ride, you're trying to get to your destination, you're trying to get to the gate. Praise God. Enjoy the walk. Enjoy the scenery. Because you're not going to be able to move Holy Spirit. Now, what do you need to do for yourself? You're going to have to gird up. I'm not telling you it's easy. 2020 was not easy. 2121 will not be easy. I'm telling you what I know. This is not over. Ain't nothing over. Nothing. You got to wait. Nothing is over. COVID is not over. All of these political pieces is not over. Your destiny is the prophetic word of the Lord over your life. It's not over. COVID can't kill it. But you and I have to wait. It is the warfare of waiting. Oh, no, 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 she, no, no, yeah. It is the warfare of waiting patiently. You are, you are, you're pregnant. But if you force that baby out, some stuff is not going to be developed. Mando no mo shana da da basia. He caught that and I'm praying for those of you right now. Who you say I got to make a decision before the 31st. Okay? Just wait. Just wait. It may be you what to do or show you what to do. We got to stop operating in this cross time mindset. We got to stop operating and working at that. It's heart attacks it's 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 sicknesses and diseases and stress that's upon the people of god because of chronos timings when you are walking in the spirit you're walking with holy spirit that is none of your concern when is it going to happen how is it going to happen where am i going to get the money none of that is your concern if he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. He will provide for it. He's not a runaway father. He's not an absent father. Whatever it is that you have received of God, you will receive it in his time. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Lay your head back and enjoy this. Lay your head, lay your head back. Just, just, just cast all your cares. Just, just put your bag down and take the wall. Take the wall. His Holy Spirit has you in God's perfect timing. You got to learn to trust Holy Spirit. You got to learn to trust Holy Spirit. Let's just pray. Sister Sharp, I've seen that. But what am I praying for? I need you to put in there. What is it that you want me to pray for? You can inbox me. If you want me to pray for you. If you are 
looking at this right now, you can email me. Website, www.gotellit.org. If you have something that is heavily upon you and you're trying to make a decision, I'll stand in agreement with you. You can inbox me here on Facebook. You can put it right here. If you're looking at YouTube, write it right in the replies and in the responses. I will pray with you. I don't want you to get out of the timings of God. Whatever the price, whatever we have to do, that's what we will do. Tell me what you want me to pray specifically for. Tell me what it is. I don't pray general prayers. I don't pray. Just, people say, pray for me. I, for what? For what? Holy Spirit is so precise and so accurate that I can actually give him bullet points. If you need that from me. If you need that, you say, I'm really concerned about this. Inbox me. Put your email in the comments. Put your response there. If if there's a timing issue right now, it it about that. Woo! It doesn't see. Inbox email me, Corletta Vaughn at gmail.com. You can reply to me in my web, at my website, www.gotellit.org. Not be stressed, not be worried, and get you into the timing of God. It's the sweetest place to live. In the timing of the Lord. Oof. I love you. <laughs> Share this all over. Hashtag Pentecost in a pandemic. Hashtag Bishop Carletta J. Vaughn. Hashtag. And if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now and you just need to repent, let's do it. Let's do it. Holy Spirit, I've offended you in your timings. I have offended the spirit time. I've, I've not operated well in the timings. Now help me. Help me now. Help me now. Oh, God. In my name, I see ya. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Send the timing. Send the timing. It's not in what? It's in the when. That's when we start having opportunity to hear a second voice. Don't go with it. Don't go with it. Stick with that first voice. Ooh, glory, 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 glory. Wait. <laughs> I say wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait. Now, you might need to just put this down. Master. Teach me how to wait. Shakata Teach me how to wait. How? How? Teach me how to wait. Master, help me enjoy this ride. Holy Spirit, I want to trust you the more. I want to get on this walkway with you. I've had some bad traumas. I've had some bad circumstances. Had some bad situations. It didn't work out like I thought. But I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try you again. Whoever it is. You're frustrating yourself. You're making your body sick. You're making your body sick. You're making people around you concerned. Stop it. Stop it now. Don't go into the next year like this. Stop it. Stop it. The people around you are concerned. It will drive you. It will drive you crazy. Holy Spirit, take us and enter us into the rest of God. The rest. The rest. There yet remaineth the rest for the people of God. Oh, I got to go. <laughs> yeah, I love you. I love you. I love you. Share this everywhere you can. Hashtag Pentecost in a pandemic. Hashtag. Bishop Carletta J. Vaughn, hashtag School of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Master teach. 
us how to wait. <laughs> Master, teach me how to wait. <laughs> Master, teach me how to wait. Master, teach us how to wait.